right, praise God. Welcome to Family Faith Center. We're so glad you guys are here. How many of y'all can give God a praise in the house? Or if, not, if you're not used to praising God, how about a round of applause? I think, I, think, I think the Lord deserves more than just a round of applause. He deserves a good shout of victory in the house. Amen. Praise God. We're so glad you guys are here. And those that are watching by way of social media, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'm telling you, we're going to have a phenomenal service. We have communion being served this morning. So everybody here already got their communion elements. If you are at home, go ahead and go grab your cracker, your chip. Whatever it is, a cup of coffee, a cup of uh, water, juice, whatever you guys may have there, and prepare it, because right immediately right after worship, we will engage into communion this morning. Y'all guys ready for the presence of God to show up in a thicker, in a rich way this morning? Amen. Well, listen, I, I felt really appropriate to share a scripture with you guys this morning out of Proverbs chapter 4, uh, and uh, because, you know, we got so many around and it's not just in our local city but around the world we just got so many increases of all kinds of virus and sicknesses and things like that i want to give you something other than medication that will help you somebody say meditation <laughs> praise god come on somebody you have to meditate on the word let me tell you what proverbs 4 20 through 22 says it says this out of the amplified it says my son attend to my words consent and submit to my sayings verse 21 let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the center of your heart. It says, verse 22 says, For they are life to those who find them, health and healing to all their flesh. Come on, somebody. Praise God. So listen, it's this word. Medication is okay, and it'll take you to an extent to somewhere. And, and I'm not saying not to take medication. Take your medication if you need to. But what I'm saying, along with it, do some meditation. Meditate on this word because this word promises to each and every one of us that it will produce health and healing into all of our flesh. Come on, somebody. That's normally what I pray when somebody asks me to pray for them. I'll say, let there be health and healing in all your flesh. That means I'm, I'm trusting that you're going to get into the word of God. And the moment you get into the word of God, health and healing is just going to show up in your body. Amen. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Praise God. I wanted to encourage you with that. Just know that all, all those that are watching out there, we are following all CDC guidelines. Every other row is blocked off. We do have hand sanitizer available. Masks are available. Uh, Lysol spray. We do clean and sanitize the building in before, during, and after services. So just know that we are in a healthy environment to praise our Heavenly Father this morning. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for everyone who is here. I ask, Lord, that you would just uh, overflow in their lives this morning. Let your presence be rich and thick. Let your people be uh, uh, open-hearted this morning. And let your provision be released into this house, Lord. We thank you, Father, that this morning as we step into praise and worship, Lord, you will inhabit our praises. You will receive our worship. There will be miracles, signs, and wonders being released. There will be breakthroughs in the house. There will be health and healing available to everybody, Father. And we thank you, God, that this is a blessed Sunday above all Sundays, God. We thank you, Father, that you are going to work in a mighty way this morning, God. God, through praise, worship, communion, and the word. And I thank you, Father, for all of this. We ask these things in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. And everybody in the house said amen and amen. We'll turn around and give somebody an air high five. Tell them it's so good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Let's step into a time of praise and worship. Father God, we come before you and we humble ourselves to you and bend in you this morning. And we remind ourselves that today is communion Sunday and we remember the sacrifices that you sent your son so that we could be free help us to remember that in Isaiah 53 5 but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our inequities the punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed Father God, for anyone that is feeling any kind of sickness this morning, Father God, by your stripes, by your blood, by your word, they are healed, whole, well, complete, with nothing missing and nothing broken, Father God. And for those that are just having a day that isn't a normal day for them, 
Give us the wisdom and the knowledge and understanding that we need to get through our day, Father God. Clear our minds, clear our hearts, Father God, so that we open our eyes to receive your word, Father God. We give you all the praise and all the glory this morning, Father God, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, Father, we thank you, God, for the word of God this morning. I ask that every word that comes out of our mouth comes directly from the heavenly headquarters of your spirit. That every word will be easily understood so that your people may be able to take it home with them, apply it, and live it out. And we ask these things in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. And everybody said amen, amen and amen. One more time, let's give God a praise in the house. Come on. Yeah, praise God. All right, man, so exciting. We had a great service this morning at 9 o'clock a.m. I'm going to put this right here. Take care of that after the service. <clears throat> we had a powerful uh, service this morning at 9 o'clock. We had about 1,000 people in the house. Come on, somebody. Amen. I know this one. We have 2,000 in this one. Praise the Lord. All right. So we're here. And uh, let me tell you, man, God is just doing some incredible things right now, even in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, you know, he's protecting us. He's watching over us. He's, he's guarding us. A lot of people right now, unfortunately, are going through some some uh, negative times with, with the virus and things. But, you know, you got to just have wisdom. Uh, you know, uh, again, you just got to have wisdom on what you're doing. I love the fact that some of you are wearing your mask on the way out. Some of you are wearing your mask even in here. Some of you are taking the hand sanitizer and putting it all over yourself and taking another shower, and that's okay. Uh, and, and a lot of you are, you know, you know you're, 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 you're taking advantage of the wisdom to just protect yourself, protect your family, and protect all your children. Uh, but then again, there's others that may not do that, and of course, they're just getting themselves involved in things and they don't need to get to, but we're praying for them, and we're just believing that we're going to get through this quick, quick enough. Amen. Praise God. But for the meanwhile, for the meanwhile, uh, I believe that God is wanting to, I would say, remind us this morning, um, because I normally don't, like, touch on this subject that I got to talk about this morning as a, as a message. Um, I have touched on it with just kind of throwing out a little scripture here and there about it, but I've never really taught it as a full message. And this morning, I truly believe that God has put it on the inside of me to share this with everybody. The title of this message this morning is dependency, all right, dependency. I'm not talking about chemical dependency. I'm not talking about sexual dependency. I'm not talking about worldly dependency either. I'm talking about heavenly dependency, God dependency, and why our faith is necessary for such a time as this. And uh, just want to encourage you that if you weren't here Wednesday night or you didn't listen to the message, that you would go back to our YouTube page uh, and press subscribe. Amen. Uh, and uh, watch that message because it it, it'll bless your heart. Uh, it's entitled um, Complete Faith for an Incomplete World. And it, it was just a very meaty message and uh, had a lot of insight and depth to it. And so if you didn't watch or listen to it, I would just suggest go back and watch that because it has got some great insights dealing with the kingdom of God within us and how our faith is really, m there's more to our faith than just trying to live you know, a whole home life here on this earth. There's actually some agenda and there's actually some purpose to our faith. All right. Amen. So anyways, dependency. And I was talking about how we are, uh, we are not dependent on this world, that we are dependent on God. And so I believe that we're going to kind of just kind of string along in that with that this morning and take us into another avenue, dependency. Now, I remember several years ago, I had a young man who was a believer, but he was just kind of struggling with his faith and uh, he had some questions, and one of the questions that he had, he came to me and asked me, he said, Bert, he says, um, can I just ask you uh, just a simple question? And he wasn't testing, he wasn't trying to be obnoxious about it. Uh, he just had a genuine question that he was, just wanted to know. He says, why do you think that we need God in our lives? Is it just so that we can get to heaven? I said, well, yeah, that's one reason, but that's not all the reason. Because if that was the case, you guys know that the moment we got saved, we would have been sent straight to heaven. But you guys got to know that we have an assignment and an agenda here on this earth as heavenly beings, all right? Because our name got, you know, written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and we're registered there in heaven, and the angels know who we are, praise God. God knows who we are, and so he calls us by name. And, uh, but <clears throat> there's other things here on this earth that we've got to also accomplish that God has a uh, purpose for each and every one of us on this earth. And so I, I, I told him, 
I said one of the things, too, is that uh, God is our source of all things, you know. And so it was very interesting that he asked that question because I'm thinking, you're a, you know, you're a believer and you should, you should want to have God in your life. But, again, he was just kind of struggling with that thing, and I think that a lot of people probably struggle with the same thing. But he said with everything that's going on in this world, all the chaos, all the troubles and everything, I mean, we're all going to go through it whether we have God or not. I said, yeah, we, we, we are. I said, but there's, there's a special extra extra that's involved in having God in your life. And that's what I want to talk about this morning just for a few minutes and kind of get you guys to think a little bit because um, uh, it is, it is a, a one – of many benefits why we need to be dependent on God. This is one of many. This is not all of all. This is just one of many reasons why we need to be dependent on God. Are you guys ready to go through this with me? All right, turn your Bibles into 1 Corinthians 8, 6, and we'll start there. It says this, yet for us, there is only one God. So I'm going to say for us. There is only one God, the Father. Watch this next line. Who is the source of of all things. Someone say he is the source. Come on, he is the source. God is the source of all things. Number one reason why we need to be dependent on God is because he is the source of all things. He is the source of our peace. He is the source of our salvation. He is the source of our wisdom. He is the source of our love. He is the source of our miracles. He is the source of our breakthroughs. He is the source of our marriages. He is the source of every single thing. He is the source of why we cut the grass. Praise God. Come on. He is the source of why we wash dishes. All right. Uh -huh. All right. So anyway, he is the source of all things. And for him, we have life. For whom we have life. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, through and by whom are all things. And through, by, and whom we ourselves exist. So understand that. We exist for him. So our existence alone comes from him being our source of life, all right? That's number one reason. Now, and that's probably the best reason right there. So that can, that can like, just, uh, you know, branch out into many different things. But I want to talk about one specific thing this morning. There's a story in the book of Job. How many of you have ever read the book of Job? Interesting book. You should check it out. It's pretty awesome. There's a story in the book of Job dealing with a man by the name of Job, okay? And there's an interesting conversation that is held at the very beginning of this book, Brother Val. Uh, and it's a conversation held between God and the devil. Wow, incredible. And God asks the devil a question. He says, have you considered my servant, Job. He is a good man. He is a man who fears the Lord. And he is a man who stays away from evil. And so the devil's like, yeah, but there's a reason why Job loves you so much. There's a reason why Job honors you so much, why he praises you so much. And let's see what this conversation holds out of the book of Job. Watch this. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job has a good reason to fear God. Now, before we go to the next verse, there is a reason that God does something for Job that we might want to evaluate. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Look at the next line. Here's what you do. He says, you have always put a wall of protection around him. Somebody say wall of protection. And his home. So you put a wall of protection around him, a wall of protection around his home, and a wall of protection around his property. Ooh, praise God. And you have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he is. Oh, my gosh. Come on, somebody. Did y'all see that? This is the devil. Listen, do you guys know that the devil knows when you are, are dependent on God? Not only does the devil know this, unbelievers do too. They see something. 
They're like, there's something about you. And here the devil points out the only reason why he praises you, the only reason why he loves you, the only reason why he fears you, the only reason why he honors you is because you always put a hedge of protection around him. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. Listen, we have a hedge of protection around us. Come on, somebody. Now, the, the way God describes Job is that he is a good man. He is a man that fears the Lord, and he is a man who eschews evil. Not issues evil, but eschews. In other words, he stays away from evil. Why? Because he understands that God has a wall of protection around him. He doesn't have to worry about who's trying to come against me. He doesn't have to worry about, is the enemy going to attack me? Is somebody going to hurt me? All he knows is that I, I have a hedge of protection around me, my home, and my property. And listen to me, guys. One of the things that's interesting about this is that Job doesn't partake in evil. Let me take a little step further. He understands that he should never pay back evil for evil. And this morning, that's what I want to get you to. That is one of the reasons why we should be dependent on God is because he provides us with a hedge of protection. He protects us. We don't have to try to take revenge back on people. We don't have to retaliate. You know what? I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. You know what? I'll wait till I see them, but I'm going to get them at the Walmart right there, right there in front of the lettuce. I'm going to, una, you know, you know what I'm saying? You try to pay this back. You try to take revenge back on people. Listen, that's not. What happens there is that if you decide to do that, God will take his hands off them. And now you're going to be left out there like in the pack of wolves out there. And those wolves will eat your lunch. You try to bring your own protection. Now watch what it says in, in Romans 12, 17 through 19 and verse 21 as well. We're going to read something. Watch this. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Come on, praise God. Look at verse 18. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Everyone. Including your enemies? Yeah, including your enemies. Be at peace with everyone. Look at verse 19. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God, for the scriptures say, I will take revenge. God says this, I will pay them back, says the Lord. Ooh, praise God. Listen, I know this sounds kind of like, well, man, I don't, I don't feel uh, like, what? Okay, here's the deal, guys. God knew exactly what he needed to send forth this morning to everybody in this room. Because somebody in this room is dealing with this. And we're wanting to take revenge. We're wanting to pay back somebody for the bad that they did to us. And somebody in this room needs to let that go. Whoever it may be. Oh, I'll get back at my ex. No, let that go. If you're a believer, let God do it. Look what it says. What's the next, the next verse 21 says? It says, do not let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Understand this, guys. You have a hedge of protection around you. You know that the devil can't touch you? In 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, the evil one cannot touch you. That's the same thing that, that God told the devil. He says, you can do whatever you want to do with Job. You just can't touch him. You can't touch this, MC Hammer. You can't touch this. Yeah, I just heard somebody say, bow, down, down, down. you doing the Rick James version or the MC Hammer? Oh, you know what he's saying. She's a flooper. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> he cannot touch you. Why is that? Because you have a hedge of protection around you guys. And listen, you don't have to worry about if your enemies are going to do something about you. 
all you have to do is focus on what Job did was be a good man. Watch this. And fear God. Watch this. In other words, let your ways be pleasing unto God. Focus on him and God will release a hedge of protection on you. You don't have to take revenge. You don't have to pay back anybody for what they did. Watch what it says in this next in Proverbs, I believe. Proverbs. Look what it says here uh, in 16.7. It says, when a man's ways please the Lord like Job's, come on, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. See, here, here's a problem, guys, because I know in the Hispanic culture, because I'm a Hispanic, right? Praise the Lord. All right. And most of us in here are too. Even you, she can praise the Lord. All right. So, <laughs> amen. She's kind of clapping. Uh, and so th- here's the concept that we have. Somebody messes with my family. Oh, you better not be messing with my family. Oh, somebody messing with my kids. Oh, especially my kids, especially Mama Bear, right, Mama Bear? Mama Bear is real quick. You ain't touching my kids, boy. You're going to get a piece of my mind. And you might even get a piece of this fish right here. You're going to be like, like Sanford and son. Oh, Aunt Esther, you're going to get some of this right here. You know, you're going to say, I'm going to give you some of these. All right, knuckle sandwich, you know. But watch this, guys. What happens when you do that is that now you're going to take revenge back. You're going to go out, and you're going to say something to them. You're going to do something to them. And now what is that going to produce? It's going to produce a cycle of getting back at each other. That's why you have so many people right now, even families, that for 25 to 30 years, something happened 25 years ago, and they still can't get along. And they're still trying to pay, but you know what? I don't like my cousin. It's a cousin. El primo, ya no. He better not come to the Christmas party because, man, le voy a poner el queque en la cara. And it's, so it's like, it's like, you know, you, you got to just like, you know, saying, don't do, you got to let that go. You know what? I, I've, I've, I've done, I, I did a funeral one time where that happened. Family members in that funeral could not sit next to each other. They even had to be police officers there and sheriffs there. And, and right there, as soon as everybody was exiting out of that funeral, boom, they, they started a smackdown right there. I was like, no, you know, it's not. I wasn't like, no, 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 man. no, no, I was cool. I was calm. I was like, man, praise God. But inside I was like, no, bro. And then, and then so now, you know, we went to the graveside, and it started up again over there. I mean, it was just wild. They had to be all sorts of, but why? Because these families couldn't let it go. And they were related. And I'm, I'm here to send you guys a message this morning. You don't have to pay anybody back. Let the Lord take care of it. See, because it's a covenant promise. It's part of your covenant promise that God will protect you. Come on, somebody. You don't have to do that. Now, watch this. I'm, I'm going to bring out a scripture. Very interesting. And this is powerful stuff right here. Out of... Out of uh, Let's read Galatians 5, 6 real quick. Let's read that one, and then we'll go into 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 4. Watch, look what Galatians 5, 6 says. It says, when you're placed into the anointed one and you're joined to him. How many of you are saved in here? All right, there you go. So here it is. Circumcision and religious obligations can benefit you nothing. So don't be religious. Praise God. Here we go. All that matters now is living in the faith that is activated and brought to perfect perfection by Love. See, our job now is to owe no man nothing but to love him. Come on, somebody. Amen. Not to pay him back if he does something evil to you. Let me take a little step further because this is kind of hard for some people to be able to take in. But your past, because somebody did to you something in the past, and it's probably, and, and some of you, I hope you ain't thinking this, but you think you're probably saying, well, Pastor Bert, it's because it didn't happen to you. That's why you're so easily to be able to say that. But God is big enough to be able to restore even that what happened in the past. Somebody took advantage of you. Somebody did something against you. Your dad left you. Your mom left you. They didn't teach you anything while you were down here on this earth. Don't blame that for your future. Because you have now a Father, now you have God. For to us, that first scripture I read to you, we have one God, and that's our Father who is the source of all things. That means that he is the source of being able to be your Father. You can get back into the family flow if you just let God teach you. Come on, somebody. 
So notice that this love is what activates our faith. Ooh, Jesus. We want to say, well, I got faith in God, but I hate my, this person. I got faith in God, but I hate them. Well, that hate is going to void your faith. It's love that increases faith. Ooh, praise God. See, all of us in here, we need to start on purpose, start loving people purposely. I'm not going to hate you in my heart. I'm not going to hate nobody. I'm not going to come against nobody. I'm not going to take revenge on anybody. I'm not going to retaliate. I'm not going to do none of that. I'm going to just love you, praise God, even though you don't love me back because my faith depends on it. Come on. Wow, incredible. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9 through 12. Watch this. There's no need for anyone to say much to you about loving your fellow believers. Now, here's the love kicking in. Now, you don't need nobody to tell you anything about this. It says, for God is continually, watch this, teaching you to unselfishly love one another. Wow, praise God. That's good. God does this. God teaches you this. Next verse. Indeed, your love is what you're known for throughout Macedonia or throughout Snyder, throughout Sea City, throughout Hawaii, if you go there. Come on. We urge you, beloved ones, to let this unselfish love increase and flow through you more and more. He's encouraging us. Listen, I, we urge you guys, let this love flow through you, increase and flow through you more and more. You don't have to pay back because you have a hedge of protection on you that the enemy can't touch you. You are going to go and walk through this. Just keep loving. Work on your love walk because you're going to get to where you need to get to. Praise God a lot quicker. And you don't have to be so focused on if you see them or if you see them, then you know what? I'm going to have to put my cross down. You know, most people say, I'm, I'm going to have to put my cross down. I'm going to have to lose my religion if I see them. Do they have that much power over you? More than God does? Come on. Verse 11. Aspire. In other words, work towards doing this. Watch this. Aspire to lead, to lead a calm and peaceful life as you mind your own business and earn your living. Now, when it says mind your own business, it doesn't mean don't, don't worry about other people. It's just saying, it's saying, you know, do your work. Do what you're supposed to do. Your kingdom business. Mind your kingdom business. Mind that. Watch this. Keep on going. It says... Uh, let's go back real quick on the, the next verse 11. It says, as you earn your own living, just as we've taught you, verse 12, by doing this, here we go, you will live an honorable life, watch this next line, influencing others and commanding respect of even the unbelievers. Ooh. Then you'll be in need of nothing and not dependent upon others. Praise God. Our dependency is on God. That's what we need to get to. Let God fight your battles. Let God do the revenging. Let God do the payback. He knows how to do it better than you and I do. Because remember earlier what I was telling you is if you take revenge back, what's going to happen is just going to create a cycle of revenge over and over. They're going to pay you back. You're going to pay them back. They're going to pay you back. You're going to pay them back. Somebody's going to get all... We're out of all this mess, you know? But if you let God deal with it, he brings peace into the picture. Because for the most part, guys, most little arguments and fights that happen, they're just a miscommunication or a misunderst misunderstanding. And just think about it. You mean for 25 years, I thought you did this and that? Yeah, I, I didn't do it. That was, you know, my gosh, man, wow. And this whole time I hated you because, but we made a decision. No, wait, God has a hedge of protection around me. Psalms 91 says that he is your shield and he is your buckler. Guys, I'm, I'm talking to somebody, I don't know who it may be, somebody in this room. Or somebody out there who's watching by social media, Facebook Live, 
you're sitting on that couch right now and you're thinking, man, that's me. Let it go. It's not worth your peace. It's not worth your family always having to look over their back and if I see them, what's going to happen? Do your best to live a life that's honorable, that's calm, and that's peaceful. Why? Because see, when you do that, that just shows that you are dependent on God, that he's going to fight your battles for you. That he's going to go in and take care of things. And you, all you have to do is just keep walking by faith. Keep being a demonstration. Be an influence over others. And let them see. It says that you will command the respect of even the unbelievers. Because the devil and the unbelievers, because they're the ones who work with the devil, they know when you genuinely are dependent on God. They know. They see it. It'll show. You don't have to tell them, no, nah, I don't drink, man. You don't, they're trying to offer you something. No, nah, I don't smoke. They're trying to offer you something. No, nah, I don't do that. Uh, no, secretary. I, I can't hang out with you at the movies. I'm a married man. You won't have all this extra stuff showing up in your life. Because they'll sense it. They'll see it. They're like, man, I ain't messing with them, man. I, I know they're, they, they, they're good. I respect them. They may not agree with what, who and what you, the way you believe, but they respect you. The word says that. The unbelief, it says you will command respect from the unbelievers. It's time for the body of believers. See, all this stuff out there, these people looking at us like we're a bunch of looney tunes and we're crazy. And y'all guys just, y'all believing in things y'all can't even see. That's just messed up. But when you pray for them, they know. They might be a little crazy. That woman might be crazy right there. But when she prayed for me that last time, that boil fell off my neck. The last time he prayed for me, that bunion fell off my, my foot. You know how them bunions be hurting too, huh? They don't know something. They're like, man, they might be a little crazy, but I respect them. I ain't messing with them. Listen, when I was a young teenager, probably about now, 12, 13 years old, I, I met this, this friend. He was, he was not a believer, neither was I. But this guy, he was a short guy too. But he had respect, and for some reason people feared him. He was just a little guy. But it was the way he carried himself. And people respected him, and people feared him. They didn't mess with him. And I was his friend. Like, I'm talking about like a best friend. Like, we hung out every day. And we'd hang out at school together. We were like, you know, bosom buddies and stuff. And we were just hanging out. And, and watch this. Because I was affiliated with him, all those people that respected him and were scared of him started respecting me and were scared of me too because of affiliation. They were like, man, if you hang out with him, if you're friends with him, then I'm your friend too, bro. You understand what I'm saying? Affiliation. Now, I'm affiliated with God. He is my bosom buddy. I mean, on a, I'm talking about not only on a daily basis, guys, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to brag. I'm saying, I'm talking about on a second to second basis. I'm con Lord, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I may not say it all out loud. I might say it in my mind. Thank you, Jesus. Because I'm a fan of God. You know what a fan is? How many football fans we got up in this house? I know some this morning, nobody wanted to say they were ready for the Cowboys, but how many Cowboy fans we got up in this house? Oh, Texas, Texas, Texas Rangers. <laughs> okay. You know what a, another word for fan is? A fanatical, fanatic. That's what we are. Fanatics for the Lord. I'm a fan of God. Not only am I a fan of God, I'm a friend of God. Not only am I a friend of God, I'm a child of God. Not only am I a child of God, I'm a servant of God. Not only am I a uh, servant of God, I'm a kingdom of God. Ooh. <laughs> Come on, it can go further, but we, I'm the anointed of God. Come on, somebody. I'm favored of God. Praise God. Come on now. Those are all benefits on why we are dependent on God. But what I'm telling you tonight and this morning is, one of them is you have a hedge of protection. 
And you don't have to pay back evil for evil, guys. You don't. Let that go. You're no longer operating in that manner anymore. Forgive those people that you need to forgive and let it go. And watch this. You're going to notice that the moment you do that, all of a sudden you'll be able to breathe, and then you can finish the work that God has laid out for you to do. Because we've got kingdom business to finish here on this earth, guys. One, listen, we have an assignment and a purpose. We have an assignment and an agenda. Watch this. And none of those assignments, agendas, and purposes are to pay back evil for evil. That's not, that's not what, and so a lot of times people, man, what this case is, understand that that is not part of the kingdom assignment. Y'all with me this morning? Did y'all get that? Praise God. Is that, is that everything? Hey, Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise in the house. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I, like I said, man, I don't know, and I normally don't really touch on this in the message, but I believe that somebody in this house needed to hear that. Or somebody out there needed to hear that, either one. And it's time for us to be set free from that. And walk in our kingdom dominion. And be heaven on earth. God is our source. So all everything that we need comes from heaven, heavenly source of our lives. Amen. Stand on your feet this morning. Amen. We're done. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Well, Father, we thank you, God, this morning for every ear in this house, every eye. I thank you, Father, that you are blessing them in higher dimensions this morning, Father. And I don't mean just financially. I mean in every area. They walk in the blessing of the Lord. They walk in God's goodness. They're like Job. They're good people. They fear the Lord. They stay away from evil. You have a hedge of protection around them. Not only around them, around their property, around their family. Father, we thank you that they're also rich, just like Job. Father, I just ask, Lord, that this morning, God, whoever it may be, that may be going through this, Lord, that, that you would just turn this thing around, that what the enemy meant for evil, God would turn it around for their good. That when their ways are pleasing to the Lord, even their enemies will be at peace with them. Father, we thank you, God, that you have even called us to love our enemies. And love is what activates our faith. And thank you, Father, that this morning we have faith elevators. Their faith is elevating. Their faith is energizing. Their faith is going to another level. They're about to see things that they've never seen before. They're about to see some incredible, amazing things. You're going to take them into a wide open space where they'll be able to see what to build, what to create, what to do, who to, who to bring to Jesus, who to pray for, how to fast, how to give, when to give, how to receive. Lord, that you have all this in store for each and every person in this house, Lord, that every kingdom assignment and kingdom agenda will be met through this group of people. We honor you this morning, Father. And we declare you are so good. And we thank you, Father, that you're strengthening our faith, strengthening our walk, strengthening our spirit, strengthening our minds, empowering us to finish the work that you have given to each and every one of us, Father. Thank you for examples of heaven on earth right here in this ministry. And let them go out and overflow into every person they come in contact with, Lord. We ask these things in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. And everybody in this house said, amen and amen. Come on, let's give God a praise in the house. Hello, family. Thank you so much for your giving. Here are a couple ways that you can give. You can mail in your offering to P.O. Box 686, Snyder, Texas, 79550. Or you can text your offering to 325-400-2829. These are a few secure and safe ways to give. We thank you so much and we treasure your offering and we call it blessed in Jesus' name.